Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to do your next presentation. Haven't we been having a great day? Hey, Virginia, I'm glad you're here. For World Card Making Day, all across the world, people are doing card making and stamping demonstrations and card classes, and it's just a great day to celebrate this amazing hobby that many of us enjoy and many more can enjoy. So we get to share what we love today. Hey Grace, I'm glad you're with us. Um, card making is just, just that little piece of joy in many of our lives. Hi Shirley. It's our opportunity to break away from all the stresses of life and I love the fact that card making requires just enough concentration where I can forget about my troubles. I can forget about what's going on in the world, but it doesn't involve me taking like all day to produce one thing. So it's pretty quick um, satisfaction. And um, so that is one of my favorite things about card making. Hey Lynn, I'm glad you're here. So just a reminder that um, we all day, we are stamping all day. Our presentations are every hour on the half hour. So if you've been with us from the beginning, you've seen everybody, aren't they doing a great job? I'm so proud of my team. Um, we've, we've just collected a group of us here that, uh, or volunteered us, I should say. Um, the team is much larger than just the presenters today, but each one of the presenters volunteered to do this and take time out of their Saturday to make something to share with you. And I'm so proud of them. Some of them have a lot of experience with Facebook Live and they do these weekly. And then we have some who have done just a few and one of our girls that was on earlier, hey Cheryl, hi Gail, and it was her very first Facebook Live. So I'm very proud of them. Okay, I'm gonna quit jabbering now. Uh, I'm the talkative one of the bunch. And I'm going, gonna go ahead and flip the camera down and uh, show you where we are going to go. Let me grab my stamp set so I can show you what we're gonna do and give you a few tips and tricks. I have a what's really considered a beginner card. Uh, anybody can make this card. You don't have to have tons of supplies. I don't have any die cutting on this card. Um, I have an optional punch. And so this is the way that I began stamping with stamp sync and paper and watercolor pencils. So. Here we go. Let's bring the camera down and see how things are looking. Make sure that I've got you in the um, in the camera view. I think I do. Let me just make sure it's lining up. And oh yeah, there I am. Okay. Yeah. Hey. All right. Okay. So this is my chosen stamp set for today, Walk in the Woods. This is in our annual catalog and I absolutely adore these images. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I love outdoor images. I love nature images and so this really fits the bill. In addition to a couple of great images that you can do a little bit of coloring in, uh, a lot of coloring in or no coloring in, um, look at the incredible um, sayings and beautiful fonts. I love when you've mixed cursive and print. Um, wishing you every kind of wonderful. Everything will be okay. That's what I'm using today. And in the year 2020, I think that's something that really needs to be almost shouted. <laughs> uh, this one, the adventure begins. The world needs more of what you are. That's another one I think is just, that's one of my favorites to use on this stamp set. Thanks for being marvelous is another great one, and I'm lost without you. So um, I think especially in a year where there's been so much social distancing, that's a really nice one to share. So let me, um, let me show you a little bit of where we're gonna go, and then I'll show you a little bit about some tools and things. So um, I wanna show you a couple of cards that I've already made with this. And um, this one here is uh, highlighting the mushrooms. And I'm gonna be using the mushrooms again today. And you can see I've got this thanks for being marvelous. I'm using a somewhat similar card scheme, color scheme because I'm using cinnamon cider again. Cinnamon cider is one of our new ink colors and it is so scrumptious for fall. It's just like the perfect fall color. So this is something that I had previously done. Hey Lynn, I'm glad you are here as well. 
I'm not sure that I greeted you earlier. I don't know why my, oh, hey, Salomon is here. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you made it here. And uh, Shirley is here. So this is my mushroom card from previously. And then this is my super simple um, hedgehog card, hedgehog mushrooms. And I'm gonna do a version of this today. I'm gonna do a little stepped up version of this today. But this is really simple stamping. This is stamp sync and paper. I did add a couple of little embellishments here. But other than that, this is stamp sync and paper. And this is done with the um, watercolor pencils, which is what I'm gonna to use today. Now, when I had done this card, I used, um, this is actually on watercolor paper, and I used ink and a, a, a watercolor, it's not called an aqua painter anymore. I think they're called like watercolor brushes. So you get, you know, you can get really different looks depending on the coloring medium that you are using. So let me show you a little bit about what we're gonna to use today. Um, my stamp set is here. On page 144 in the catalog, you will see there two sets of watercolor pencils. I highly recommend that you get both. We had, this is the initial set that was introduced for us, and it has 13 pencils in it. Then they decided to come out with a second set, and it's the assortment two. It only has 10. Now the first set is $16, but you get 13 colors, so that's amazing value. And they last, I mean, really almost forever. And then, um, the watercolor pencil assortment number two gives you 10 additional colors, which I love because here you have old olive, then they added in granny apple green, so you can kind of get a brighter green with that. Um, you know, here we have pumpkin pie, then they gave us Cajun Cray. So this definitely adds to our color options and makes a big difference. And what I do with mine is I keep them all in just a little pencil case. So um, then they're easy to grab. They're also super easy. They have, I love the fact that the color is printed on the barrel and uh, on, the, on the end. And the t one of the, my top tips when using the watercolor pencils is you don't want a sharp tip. You want to keep your tip kind of dull. And um, that is all I need to show you there for now. Let's go ahead and start stamping. So I have a little piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I have all the measurements in my PDF for you. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ink up, and I'm just using my Memento Black ink pad. You could use the, um, you could use the um, stays on, but it's really not necessary. And I'm a fan of only using what is absolutely necessary. Now, I have a little post-it notepad here somewhere. Oh, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mask this. And this is a super simple technique. When I have the hedgehog, if I stamp him in right on top of where I have the, um, the mushrooms, you'll be able to see all this grass in the middle of my hedgehog. So I don't want that. I'm gonna do a very simple technique called masking. So let's make the mask first. So what I'm gonna do is use my black ink pad. This is a super small post-it note. You could use any size post-it note. Um, and actually, you don't, it doesn't have to be a post-it note. So this is the mask I had previously made. It's kind of junky looking. So I figured it'd probably be best if I actually showed you how to do this. Um, instead of just telling you about it. So here is my little hedgehog stamp. And I am going to get him right up here because I want some of that sticky around him is what I want, is that the post-it note sticky is gonna help me. So what I'm gonna do now is before I actually cut this out, because I am gonna need to cut that out, is I'm going to ink up my stamp again because it will not be dark enough. I've already transferred that ink. And this time I am going to put him, my little hedgehog, I'm gonna put him right down here in this corner of my car, my little piece of Whisper White. I'm gonna create a scene. Now the way I'm gonna create that scene, I am gonna cover this up for a minute but just so I don't end up getting it all over myself. I'm gonna tear off my 
super sticky, sticky note pad. And I'm just gonna take a pair of paper snips and I'm gonna fussy cut him. Now, I don't need to like get into all of the really fine um, pencil marks because this is almost like a pen and ink drawing is what it reminds me of. Um, I don't have to get into like all of his little toenails and things like that. That's not necessary. So I'm just kind of going around it, but I will say that a lot of times when we fussy cut, typically we cut, we give like a little white surround, a little white edge. When you're masking, you want to actually cut pretty close to, uh, to your image that's stamped on there. Hey Marlene, I'm glad you joined us. And Yvonne, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you like my card. We're gonna step it up a little bit and I think that you're gonna like, uh, I'm not sure if you'll like the first one or the second one better, or maybe you'll like them both the same. I think they, they both have elements to uh, commend them. So let's go all the way up there like that. Now, the beauty of using a post-it note versus just paper is this has sticky on it now. So what I'm gonna do, and I probably need to stand up here because I need to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. And I can't see it on my computer, so I'm hoping that I'm still within the camera range. Um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this right over like so. And that is going to allow me to stamp right over this with my mushroom image and not mess up my little hedgehog guy. So, let's, this is a large stamped image, so I'm going to turn it upside down, ink it up really good. And you see how when I position this, I want it to, I want the hedgehog to be kind of peeking out from the mushrooms, like he's just come out from foraging around in there. Now watch, take the mask off, voila. There's my little hedgehog scene perfectly done with the mask. And what I usually do with these masks is I just keep them in my stamp set. So what I'll do, and I'll just show you, I'm going to clean my stamps really quick here. Clean my hedgehog because I won't need him again. I'm going to clean my mushrooms. And um, Marlene, I'm glad. Yes, the, the cards have been great today, haven't they? I think we've had just a great day, a great, um, uh, what's the word, I'm looking, variety of different styles and different uh, stamps, stamp sets. So when I put this little guy in here and put my hedgehog in here, what I can do is take my mask and just put it right there. And then it's ready to use. In fact, I have a second one here. So I'm just gonna put that one in there too. And then when I go to use this, and they don't, I mean, they're not gonna stick very well, but they're there, they're there. And it doesn't matter if they get ink on them. So that is ready to go the next time I wanna use it. Okay, so let's see how we're going to color these little guys in. And what I like to do is when I've selected the colors I'm gonna use, instead of having to rummage through all of the colors in my little, um, in my little pencil case, I pull out the ones I'm gonna use and just put a rubber band around them. Now I'm gonna start with the basic black and this is gonna allow me to just really darken some of my hedgehog and make this just a little bit darker. Then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a little bit more color to some of these lines, not all of them, some of them anywhere that I want there to be a little bit more definition and definitely down here on his little paws and his little his little nails and then right down here as well and then 
I need to get a little bit on the outside here so we can see easily, readily, where he, where he starts and where he ends. And then I'm going to take a blender pen. And this is the secret when you're using the watercolor pencils. The blender pens, I think they're still $10. They've been $10 for a long time. But they are, you get three of them. And look how it blends the color. So this causes the black to be blended out. And now I'm just making him a little bit more of a gray. And if you look at, um, at hedgehogs in the wild, we lived in England for nine years and we had hedgehogs every night in our garden. And I know that parts of the United States, you, you have hedgehogs. Um, so they are, they are sometimes brown, sometimes gray, bits of black in them, just kind of natural colors. And so by doing this, I have a really cute hedgehog. I didn't want to make him too brown because I wanted there to be a little bit of contrast with the, um, with the mushrooms. Robin, I'm glad you like my tips. I think that watercolor pencils um, are just the bomb. Um, and I will say one of the reasons I think that when I first started stamping, this is the first things that I did. I, I first started with watercolor pencils and um, wildlife images because that's what I'm very drawn to. And I will also say I'm a child of the 60s. And growing up in the 60s, we didn't really have markers. The only markers we had were, I better put the, I got a little bit of a piece of grass up here, so I better include that. Um, we had magic markers, but they were real fat. They definitely were not artsy. And so um, that came about much more in the 70s and 80s. And so as a child of the 60s, I had a set of, what, uh, well, they weren't called watercolor pencils. They were just colored pencils. But they were, now I recognize, they were artist quality. They were really soft leads. And I absolutely loved coloring with them. So I think, you know, when you can tap into those positive childhood memories, um, you're probably in a really nice place. So any, any else, any of my other senior friends here, anybody else who grew up in the 60s, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Now, this is Old Olive. Now I'm going to come in here with a little bit of um, Granny Apple Green and just brighten that up a little bit so it's not too dull. And you see how I can just kind of press right over that? I'm not even going to use my blender pen on that because it's already kind of blended. And that keeps it from getting too kind of muddy with the, with the old olive. I don't want it to be too um, dull or, um, yeah, I guess just dull. Now, what I'm going to do on these mushrooms is a little bit different. So I'm going to start with giving them just a little bit of definition with my early espresso. And early espresso and black go really well together. Uh, the early espresso helps keep the black from getting too dark. So I want this to have um, the look of being drawn so, so dark that it, um, is too much of a good thing and that's definitely what you can have so I'm really just kind of um, coming in and going over those um, drawing marks now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a true scrap and you can see where I've been cutting this out and stamping on it and everything else so this is a true scrap and one of the things that I like to do is to make my own little color palette so I'm just going to scribble some uh, crush curry and I'm going to scribble some Cajun craze and I'm even going to bring in a little bit of cherry cobbler I mean those are classic fall colors right there and I'm also going to bring in a little bit of the early espresso and what this allows me to do is to come in here and pick this up and bring it in to what I'm doing here so this allows me to not draw directly on here so I don't get such a dark version of that color. And it's also going to allow me to take some of this Cajun craze and this crushed curry and blend them out 
for a softer version. And see how I'm just coming back in now to that early espresso and getting a really nice mix of color. And I feel like it's a little bit, uh, needs a little bit of a boost there. So I can come in with that cherry cobbler and see how that just brings a little bit of a warm color. It doesn't look red. It's just a little bit of a highlight in there. Okay, I've lost my feet again, so let me come back in. Facebook has been doing this to me a lot lately, and I don't know why it keeps bumping me off. Okay, so now I'm going to um, just pick up some of this early espresso, a light bit of it to do the stems of my mushrooms. But I want to bring in a little bit of color to the mushroom caps more than anything. And you can see that I'm just using kind of strokes because I find that um, on these larger spaces, it's going to give me a better, um, a better image, um, kind of a better version of what I'm doing here. Now, there are some mushrooms that have quite a bit of red in them, like your classic toadstool. So I'm going to put a little bit of red there. And that, again, just keeps it from being so much of the same thing. And then here, I'm going to come and pull these together and really get some of that crushed curry for this mushroom. And you see how when I keep going, how the color fades. It gets lighter and lighter. If I want it to be darker, I come back in here and get some more. And then if I run out of ink over here, then I can just, it's not, well, yeah, it is ink. Um, I can just take my watercolor pencil and get, grab some more color to put on my little palette. But I think, honestly, I'm pretty happy with that just the way it is. And so I'm not going to do anything else. So let me take my pencils. I'm going to be a tidy girl for a change. I'm going to put these back in their box so that I know where everything is. Darlene, if you're watching, you'll be very proud of me. Darlene is my assistant, and she's super tidy. And I learned a long time ago to hire in your weaknesses. Tidiness is not my strength at all. So everybody who works for me and uh, assists me has to be a tidy, organized person, because I'm not. Now, I am going to back this with early espresso. If I back it with black, again, it's just too much dark, too much of a good thing. Hey, Pat, I'm glad you're here. Well, I'm glad you're my, I'm your hero. I love, love, love working with you. Pat is another one who comes and works in my studio every week and is such a blessing to me. Okay, so what I need to do is put that down uh, with a little bit of adhesive, which, haha, here we go, is right here. And I know that we've had um, several people talking about different adhesives today, which really makes me happy because like Darlene, I use all of our adhesives all the time, but some people have one particular that they truly prefer. So I have got a super cute little image. Now, you know what? The one thing I forgot to do here is I typically like to put a little bit of brown underneath. I mean, he, you could tell he's coming out of the grass. You know, he's kind of coming out of the grass here, but I don't like my, my critters to look like they're like walking on air. So let me just pull in a wee bit of my palette again and you have something on your lips. I, I missed that entirely. I, I missed that entirely. Okay. There's something funny going on on my, on my Facebook feed. I don't know what it is, but you guys are commenting about something that I've completely lost. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a little bit of grass under my um, under my hedgehog, and you can see that I'm taking um, some of my greens again, as well as some brown, to create a little bit of dirt and a little bit of grass right underneath here. Let's see if I can do this without totally mucking everything up. Darlene and Pat are having fun. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. That is what we are meant to have. 
This is not, this is a, this is a fun day. It's Saturday. So you see how I've just created a little bit of a line under there so that, and it's a soft line, so it, you know, he's not walking on the air. Okay, now let's see what we're going to do. There he is, my cute little hedgehog. Some people have them as pets. A friend of mine, um, her, her daughter has hedgehog, hedgehog pet. Okay, here we go with my card base, which is, again, cinnamon cider. One of my favorite new end colors, perfect for fall. And I'm going to, you know, that I always like to score my card stock first. I think you get a better crease. And people ask at my card classes, you know, where, which side do I fold it on? And this little raised bit is like the worm, and you want to hide the worm. And if you just, that hide the worm, trust me, it will stay in your head, and you will never again wonder where you were supposed to fold your card. So now I am going to put him on some plaid. So here's my original, and this is the way I'm stepping it up a little bit, is I'm getting a little bit of plaid underneath. I know that this plaid, um, I think Melissa featured it, Melissa Ramirez featured it on her card earlier, which was presented by Melissa Thomas, uh, but her design used um, the plaid tidings, and I think that I heard Melissa Thomas say that she is going to be using it on her Campology card later. So, lots of versatility with plaid tidings, and of course, it's just that time of year. Now, one other little tip I'm going to give you here is I would typically put this up on dimensionals. You may or may not have noticed these black dimensionals in the catalog. You actually get a combination pack. They actually make a big difference when you're adhering these dark colors. Um, instead of having this white kind of shadow when you open the card, when you see it sideways and you see that kind of little bits of white, uh, kind of just, you know, when you open a card and you see, you know, this little bit under here, instead of having white, it can be a little bit unsightly. I will, I will confess that when we first came out with these black dimensionals, I thought, well, that's one of those things that I really don't need. But I have come around and I have definitely changed my on them. I think they make a big difference. You can already see how they just blend in with that early espresso. And so when you open my card, you won't see any, you know, little white bits. Now, because I'm using the designer series paper, I can't stamp my greeting directly there. So, never fear. Um, I'm going to make a little flag to put on there, and I'm going to bring back in my early espresso. Now, you might wonder why I didn't use black here and here, but actually, if you use black, which is what is in this plaid, it gets a little bit too dark. So, the early espresso allows me to have the dark and the highlight of that, but it also brings it um, a little bit softer. Now, um, you're going to wonder how am I going to stamp that. I'm going to pull out my trusty Whisper White ink. Now, I was featuring this in a Facebook Live I was doing last week on my Facebook group, uh, my Facebook page, and I wanted to show you because this is one of those things, well, I probably ought to stamp first because it's going to need to dry. This is one of those things that sometimes people are not aware of. It's a little bit hidden in the catalog. Our Whisper White ink has been around for a long, long time. And what I love about it is I give you a little bit of a chalkboard effect. It's not super, super white, but it's gonna show up really nicely. Is that straight? Yeah, okay. So let me just show you while that's drying, it's much more like a, um, it's much more like a, um, paint. So it's going to have to dry. You can actually put embossing powder over this and use this as an embossing medium. But what I'm going to do instead, oh, that looks pretty good in the middle, doesn't it? Hmm. Might want to change that. Um, I'm going to let this just dry. So while that's drying, let me show you. Here are the watercolor pencils in the catalog that I showed you earlier on page 144. So if you just go down one page, you will see to 147. Uh, now I have the old style of this Whisper White. It's called Craft Stampin' Pad. And um, it actually 
comes, yeah, it comes with the refill. So um, when you get it, it's not gonna already be inked up. It's just gonna be a, a, a naked pad and you're gonna have to add the ink to it. Um, and it's, it's like paint, it really is, but it's brilliant stuff to use. So it's been around a long time and I think sometimes it just gets a little bit hidden, a little bit forgotten. Um, I think what my initial plan was to put this over here, very much like I did here. So let me show you my favorite way to make a flag. This is the tailored tag punch. If I could only have one punch, I'd probably have this one because you can use it to uh, make it, of course, a label. But the way I use it more often than not is I use it to flag. I make all my flags this way. So just feed it in, see where you are. You don't want to go down there. So come up about here, and then I'm just going to go to the middle, and boom, I have a perfect flag. So that's really my favorite way to use that tailored tag punch. So you can see, this is still stamps ink and paper. This is definitely optional. You can just hand cut your, um, your flag, not, you know, not essential at all. And then I'm just going to put this down with a little bit of seal, and then I'm gonna add my little gems, and that is it. I think what I like about this little um, hedgehog and really this whole stamp set. Definitely, I could send this to one of my sons. I could send this to an uncle or a cousin, a guy cousin, easily. So I love the fact that this is very much gender neutral. I could send these to men or women, boys or girls, and they would love it. Uh, Mary, you saw the video where I used the white ink and you ordered it. Yay, I'm glad. I think you're gonna love using it. See how it's really, it's dried already. It takes a couple of minutes to dry. But it's a, it's a fairly crisp white. It's, it's soft, but it's fairly crisp. If you put white embossing powder over that and heat it, it's gonna be really bright white. So now, what I am going to do, and I thought, you know, those toadstools that have the, the polka dots on them, that was kind of the vibe I was looking to recreate. So I thought I would just take a couple of these. These are the Elegant Faceted Gems. It's what I'm using in a card class I'm, I'm featuring this month. And you get some of the clear ones, you get some of the uh, petal pink ones, and you get some, these are a little bit more milky white and they're more a little bit more, um, they've got like glitter in them. So on this one, I used, and I probably should try that and see, I used the um, petal pink ones and they just kind of blend in. Um, these, when you use these, they look a little bit more like raindrops. So I do definitely think that having a little bit of color gives them more of the look I'm wanting to kind of recreate, just, or maybe not, not have um, polka dots so much, it's just a little bit of that look. So on my smaller mushroom here, I'm gonna use a smaller petal pink gem. And again, these are the elegant faceted gems. They will, I will have all of the supplies listed in my PDF. So there you have it. Um, I did want to put something on the inside, but I, I don't think I have my Whisper White. I would typically put a piece of Whisper White cardstock on the inside as a little panel. Makes it easier to write. You definitely, this cinnamon cider is light enough that you could definitely write on the inside. But I think it looks a little bit more finished on this. It's a fairly dark cardstock. Uh, to put that layer on the inside and then to be able to put a little piece of the designer paper on the inside. Now I can, let's see, do I have my liquid ink? No, not liquid ink, liquid. Well, I don't have my liquid adhesive over here. Oh, that's a dirty envelope that got messed up. Um, but you see how I could do what Terry Lynn did. You know what? I'm going to break away for one second. I'm going to get my Whisper White cardstock. I'm going to get my, um, my liquid glue so I can totally finish this and give you the whole look. So let me have, take one second to step away here.
any of you watch my regular Facebook Lives, I do Facebook Live at facebook.com slash sweetstamper twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Central. And I am notorious for always forgetting something. It seems to just be, I just cannot escape it. Okay, so this is going to go on the inside here. Now, I have a little scrap of this designer paper. Ah, here it is. So I can put that just like I'm going to copy Terry Lynn. This is exactly what Terry Lynn did. So I don't actually need my liquid glue yet, but I will in just a minute. So I'm still going to use my seal here because it's quick and easy. Again, I like all of our adhesives. I use them all on a regular basis for different things. So, Kathy, I'm glad you love my cards. Um, like I said, this Walk in the Woods stamp set was one that caught my eye when the cat new catalog first came out. And I think it's just adorable. So there, I have that nice little piece there. So even though this is a bit mucky, this has probably got laid in some ink or something, I'm going to put a label over that anyway. So I'm not going to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is take my liquid ink, which is probably getting very near the end. Take the, let's see if I can dab it. I thought that Terry Lynn did a great job with her envelope and that's kind of inspired me. And I'm just, because you know, you have these little off cuts from the six by six paper stacks when you um, cut your designer paper to match your card and then, or to, to layer on your card, and you have this leftover piece. So instead of, instead of just throwing it away, I'm going to cut it. And you definitely want to use the liquid glue on that. And the reason being is because this is going to go through the mail system and it's going to go through machines and it's going to be thrown into piles and you don't want anything coming loose. And the liquid glue, you can get a lot closer to the edge. And um, so it is definitely the way I, th I would recommend doing any kind of uh, envelope, um, that's what I'm looking for, embellishment. So there, doesn't that look just like fall? Isn't that a gorgeous plaid? So there is my plaid envelope. There is my plaid card, and I'm actually really happy with the way that turned out. So this little tutorial showed you how to use the watercolor pencils and to mask your image so that you can create a scene really, really with, with ease. And here's my original. This is what I was gonna do today, and then I decided to step it up just a wee bit. I really like them both. Um, this would be a fun card to send to a grandchild. Uh, a college student, um, I would I would actually send this to my husband if he were, you know, on a business trip or something. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody's really going on business trips right now. But um, I think this could go for a lot of different things. If also, everything will be okay. This is a good one to send somebody who's in hospital or somebody who's received a really tough diagnosis. I have so many people on my prayer list right now with really heavy-duty um, heavy duty things going on. And this is a great card. I think it, it just exudes comfort. Not only that everything will be okay, but look at that cute little hedgehog, a little piece of nature coming to you to encourage you. And yes, Terry Lynn, you're right. This plaid screams fall. It is a beautiful plaid. This is the, um, this is my plaid. It's all, you can see how much, how much I have just really whacked into this. This is all I have left from my first package and I have a second package that just arrived. So um, I have used the heck out of this paper. Absolutely love it. Michelle, uh, not Michelle, Melissa uh, featured it this morning and she very aptly said that there is, there are plaid uh, patterns in here that work for fall, that work for Christmas, that work for Valentine's Day. I highly, highly recommend it. So that my tutorial for you for today. 
and naturally I went a bit long. I am the chatty girl here, so um, that's just kind of the way I roll. But thank you so much for tuning in. Um, our next presenter is up at 3.30. I'm still uh, putting in the pictures for my PDF tutorial, but that will post here shortly. And um, for those of you who have not been here all day or missed the introduction, Every single one of our videos will have a PDF tutorial. This is all free material for you. So use it freely and share it if you would like. And um, we still have several more presentations for the, through the day. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Take care and God bless.